Welcome to Ring Theory. Gollum, or Smeagol, as he was once known, was born in the year 2430 of the Third Age. He was a store hobbit, belonging to a respectable family, and lived his early life under the guidance of his grandmother. On his birthday, at the age of 36, he and his cousin Deagle went fishing in the Gladden Fields. After Deagle was pulled from the boat by a huge fish, it was there he found the One Ring, dropped by Sealdor almost two and a half thousand years before. This set in motion a series of events that would unknowingly cause large ripples across the subsequent centuries. Smeagol instantly fell to the power of the ring, demanding it from his cousin as a birthday present. After Deagle refused, Smeagol strangled and killed him there on the riverbank, taking the ring for himself, thus making his cousin the shortest bearer of the One Ring in Tolkien's Legendarium, having it for only a few minutes at most. After putting on the ring, hiding Deagle's body and returning home, Smeagol then realised that he was invisible. He used the ring to steal, sneak, eavesdrop and use information against those in his community. Shortly after his return, most grew to dislike him and he was ostracised. Due to the muttering to himself and gargling in the back of his throat, he became known as Gollum. Eventually, his grandmother banished him from their family hobbit hole and he went looking for shelter in the Misty Mountains and found what the fandom know as Gollum's Cave in the year 2470 of the Third Age. Gollum dwelt there for over 400 years, a lifespan far longer than any other hobbit. The ring not only changed his mind over those years, but twisted his body, making him disfigured. There he famously called it his precious, or his birthday present, as a way to convince himself he hadn't committed the murder those years before. He lost the enjoyment of taste through normal hobbit or elven food, and survived by catching raw fish and bats. On occasion, he even ate goblins that strayed too far from Goblin Town. The centuries of isolation with him and the ring warped his mind, and by the time Bilbo meets him in The Hobbit, he had developed two personalities, the good side being Smeagol and the bad side being Gollum. When considering the story of Gollum, it is important to treat the One Ring more like a character than an object. After all, it has an evil will of its own. Sensing its possible destruction, it suggested in the text that it slipped itself from Isildur's finger, falling into the Anduin all those years before. It's likely, without feeling Sauron's presence in Middle-earth, it was content to have an isolated and protected existence with Gollum for several hundred years in the Misty Mountains. During The Hobbit, the necromancer, who is later discovered to be Sauron, is stirring in Dol Guldur. Perhaps feeling the re-emergence of its master, it likely slipped from Gollum's finger, hoping to be found by nearby goblins and returned to Sauron. Instead, using a quote from the films, it was picked up by the most unlikely creature imaginable a hobbit, Bilbo. Ironically, this quote isn't actually accurate. Knowing that Gollum used to be a hobbit, and its previous although brief owner Deagle was also a hobbit, and of course Frodo goes on to be a ring bearer, this makes almost 70% of all of the ring bearers in Tolkien's legendarium hobbits. The One Ring then goes on to abandon Gollum after a tussle with a goblin. He later comes across a lost Bilbo Baggins in his cave. Their infamous riddle game then occurs, with Bilbo outsmarting him by asking, what have I got in my pocket? After realising his precious was gone, he rightly assumed that was the object of Bilbo's riddle and chased him. Whilst running away, Bilbo discovers the power of invisibility the ring has, and was able to eventually evade Gollum, jumping over him to escape. As Bilbo flees, he can hear the shrieks of Gollum, shouting, Thief. A common question from fans about the time period that follows is why did Gollum not try to get the ring back from Bilbo in the years between the start of the Fellowship of the Ring? After all, Bilbo had told him that he was a Baggins from the Shire. Ultimately, he did try to find him, 
it took him several years to muster up the courage to leave the cover of the Misty Mountains as he had no love of the sun or daylight. Eventually, he left the Misty Mountains tracking Bilbo's movements, but the trail went cold. Although he technically used to be a hobbit, it wasn't common knowledge for all hobbits to know where the other hobbit clans dwelt. As the store hobbits mainly settled on the Gladden Fields, the Shire hobbits were well over the other side of the Misty Mountains, so Gollum simply didn't know where to go. He eventually was drawn to Mordor, as all corrupted beings were at this time, discovering the stairs of Cirith Ungol that he later guides Sam and Frodo through in The Return of the King. He also discovers and survives an encounter with Shelob, a great spider which he sets a trap for Frodo later on in the story. He was then captured by Sauron's forces, taken to the dungeons of Baradur and tortured. He was tortured by Sauron himself to reveal all he knew of the ring. This is when Sauron first learned of the Shire and the name Baggins. Another common question is why Sauron decided to let Gollum go, a decision which proved to be a grave mistake in the end. Essentially, Sauron didn't see Gollum as a real threat, and he also thought that he may seek and draw out the One Ring. In a way, he was right, as he did just that, although it seems to be a huge slice of luck that Gollum encounters the Fellowship in the first place. Upon his release from Barad-dûr, Gollum's misfortune continues as he's captured by Aragorn. Aragorn and Gandalf had been searching for Gollum for several years after beginning to guess what the One Ring was. He was interrogated by Gandalf, who left him in the care of the Elves of Mirkwood. He was able to escape them as well, and fled into Moria in an attempt to lose those pursuing him. This worked, but Gollum was then unable to find his way out of Moria. He resides there until, rather fortunately, the Fellowship pass through and he follows them, through and out. From then on, Gollum's journey intertwines with the main story in The Lord of the Rings, with him becoming a main character. His tragic story ends with him finally reclaiming the ring in the cracks of doom and dying seemingly in glee in the lava. Gandalf later tells Frodo that he was not an evil being who deserved death, but rather deserved pity, and states that Frodo's fate could have been similar to that of Gollum's. Without doubt, he is one of Tolkien's greatest and most complex characters. Please let me know if you feel pity for Gollum in the comments below. Thanks for watching Ring Theory. On this channel, I'll be focusing on anything and everything to do with The Lord of the Rings. Tolkien lore from the books, the original trilogy, and the new TV show. If you like the video and want to hear more, please drop me a like and hit the subscribe button below.